I'm Ellie Hernandez. Thanks for coming. Uh, this is Arlington Mass or Public Transit Forming Formation Meeting. Really appreciate you guys being here. I think it's really important for everyone to get to where they want to be. It's been done before and it's failed, and so now we're looking for newer ways to actually pass it. Uh, my name is Daryl. I'm a student at uh, UTA. I'm a cyclist here as well. I advocated for things when I've had time, and I'm ready to see public transportation here as well. Uh, David Harding. Uh, workers in our National League of Dallas Fort Worth. Uh, also a bicyclist, um, huge advocate for mass transit, public transit, and uh, very, very passionate about that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Joel Constantine, uh, a student at UTA, as well as a cyclist. I live in Northside and passionate about public transportation and see this worthwhile fight. Uh, my name is Randy Rushing. I'm a manager at Potage's Other Stuff, a local business here in downtown Arlington, and I'm a huge advocate for public transportation in Arlington. My name is Jens Rushing. I work as a paramedic on Arlington's ambulance service, also a big advocate for public transit. Me and Randy have traveled enough that we can see that many of the world's great, notable, interesting cities have public transit as a vital part of their background, something that Arlington crucially, critically lacks. Harriet Early, MA Political Science, UTA, 1995. I lived here since 1970 and well aware that Arlington uh, became a city because the railroad was brought here. I was aware of what the inner urban has done for Arlington. I don't believe Arlington has a future unless there is a mass transit system made available to all its citizens. I'm Kim Field, running for City Council North Arlington District, knowing we need transportation. We have to invest in our city. We need to save our air quality every way we can. I have no idea. Cats, maybe. If you want cats. No. <laughs> Change, we need to involve different people. Or... So starting with that, we need to know what the failures were in the past three times. Okay. And this is Chris Dobson. <laughs> Because I would love Arlington to help people get around and not just require them to buy their own cars and then insure them and then have awesome. their quality of life <laughs> suffer because of it. Yeah. It seems like it would be simplest if we were a city that was concerned about that. Well, they like to get the parking revenue when you go to the stadium. Park that car, pay that 50 bucks, you know. 80 bucks. 80? Oh my gosh. All right, guys, so well, what do we know about the failures? I know that in the past, usually when it's come up for a vote, it's been portrayed as if we put money into this, then we'll be able to put money into road maintenance and repair. Other city councilmen will usually say the issue isn't to fix the roads, it's to make the roads safer by reducing the number of truck drivers on the roads, i.e. spend more on cops. That same argument was used in the anti-bike fight last year, too. Uh, uh, next up on the agenda is Chris Dobson was going to give a lecture on the legal process. As I understand it, the city of Arlington requires a petition with 5% of voters in Arlington in order to force a measure onto the ballot. This would basically be requiring us to go out, talk to people, get them to sign a petition. Not unlike this one, has a couple fields, date, signature, printed name, address, county, voter ID, and date of birth. Recent state law has said that petitions must have all of these. Can they be electronic in that form? You probably have to have it in standard form, signatures and everything. 5% yeah. of 180,000 at this point is, uh, what, 9,000 signatures. So this is not going to be simple process, but at the same time, it's not time sensitive. Once we turn them in, they, ju they just go on the next official election. That might be May, might be November, but it's probably going to be one of those two election cycles. And then at that point, we would really have to turn out the vote in order to get this to pass. So we'd probably prefer it to be in May if they're still having May elections. Smaller turnout, the people we bring are worth more relatively. Um, in the November election, we might be able to count on, say, uh, the Democratic element to basically approve mass transit, but even still, that's not a huge demographic in Arlington.
surprise, surprise. The way the petitions are designed is you need to have the name of the circulator on it. So if there's one person in charge of the petition, they can sign off on everybody, take it to the notary public or the city secretary. Could it be an and entity instead of a single person? Probably not. I don't think they allow that. Also, the city secretary is a notary public. She has to sign it for free. <clears throat> Most people don't know their unique voter unique identification number, but that's easily checked up on at the Tarrant County voter site, um, Tarrant County slash elections. And you can actually check those just over the internet as they're signing it. If you get a bunch of signatures, you can go back through the next day and try to run all the names through, see how many you collected. If you're busy, it's probably a lot easier than trying to do each individual person as they go. So it's necessary to have the voter identification, voter identification yes, it is. number? Yeah, this, this year, this last legislative cycle, they changed ridiculous. it to where every single field has to be filled in. And so there's 180,000? 100, yeah, I think it's 189,000 the last time I checked. When I ran last year, there was 6% turnout and it was 10,200. Subtract 1% and you're looking at 9,000.